everything is made from atoms these days, but are atoms really as real as they try to convince us they are? It would seem to be so. I'm going to take you through one of the most groundbreaking discoveries of the last century. So the story begins in the calm waters of a harbour. So let's imagine the harbour as being sort of warm and deliciously scented and bubbly because that is sort of the easiest thing to imagine, isn't it? The waves of the ocean might be crashing against the outside of the harbour, but that doesn't matter because only the bit of the waves that get to the harbour entrance actually get to come inside. And when a wave goes through a small gap, it always spreads out and that's called diffraction. And so the tiny bit of wave that actually got through gets thinner and thinner and weaker and weaker. Just like taking a knob of butter and trying to spread it across a whole motorway of bread. All of this means it doesn't really matter if your boat is directly beyond the entrance to the harbour because the wave reaching you will have got so weak from diffracting and spreading out that you'll only feel the slightest ripple. We've been using harbours for thousands of years. We've been using harbours for far longer than we've understood diffraction. But one thing that you will never ever see if you travel the world and look around is a harbour with two entrances. To be fair, we probably did try and make a harbour with two entrances. I mean, we've tried a lot of things. How else do the people from Iceland discover that the only safe way to eat a shark is to cut off a bit of it bury it underground for six to 12 weeks whilst it rots and ferments, and then dig it back up again, dry it, and then when it's dry, cut off the brown layers that form on the outside. So we probably did try to make a harbour with two entrances, but we will have found that it failed dramatically, and here is why. As the water waves diffracted through the two gaps, they will have overlapped with one another. Now, to see what's going on, imagine that the lines that I've drawn are the peaks of the waves, the tops, and in between the lines, those are the dips in the waves or the troughs. Where the peak of one wave meets the dip of another wave, the two of them cancel out and so you get calm waters. So it's so far so good. But the problem comes when the peak of one wave meets the peak of another wave and the two of them combine into one huge mega wave which hurtles towards the back wall of the harbour, hell bent on destroying everything in its path. If you draw out the movement of the waves, you can see that certain areas of the back wall of the harbour are going to be hit with one of these huge destructive waves. And meanwhile, the points in between them are going to be hit with nothing, just calmness. And this pattern that forms on the back wall is called a diffraction pattern. Any time you take any kind of wave and you pass it through two small holes, you'll get this kind of pattern. Next part of the story, let's move away from the harbour and instead, take this native bath cauliflower. Now we're going to load this into a cannon and we're going to fire it towards a neighbour's house. Just like the rubbish harbour that had two entrances, we're going to need to find a house that has two open front doors. So in order to wage this relentless cauliflower war against this two-doored house to teach it a lesson for having two doors, what you're going to need is thousands of cauliflowers and a cannon that can fire the cauliflowers in a sort of scattergun approach towards the house. Most of the cauliflowers are just going to hit the outside of the house, but some of them are going to go through the doors and they're going to make two patches of cauliflower pulp on the back walls. We don't get a diffraction pattern because cauliflowers aren't waves, they're cauliflowers. So now let's do the same experiment but on an absolutely minuscule level. So we're going to use two tiny little holes and a tiny little back wall and instead of firing cauliflowers we're going to fire electrons because they are one of the tiniest particles that we know of. When we first learn about electrons in school we learn about them as these tiny little hard spheres so we'd expect them to act like cauliflowers but when they go through the gaps they don't. We get a diffraction pattern. This means that electrons act like waves. They go through the gaps they spread out and they diffract and they interact with one another and then they make this pattern on the back wall. This absolutely exploded so many people's minds when they discovered this. The people doing the experiment immediately set out to try and win against the electrons and so rather than firing loads of them at the same time, they figured out a way to fire just one single electron at a time so that they couldn't possibly interact with one another. Now, this experiment took a huge amount of time to build up an image on the back wall, and so they all just went on holiday. When they came back, this is what they saw. 
This means that each electron is simultaneously going through both holes at once, diffracting, interacting with itself, and then forming a diffraction pattern on the back wall. This was absolutely monumental. It completely transformed what people thought particles were. Every single particle is actually a wave, vibrating and undulating and spreading out in every direction, just like water waves. Keen to learn more, the experimenters did one more experiment where they ran the same thing again with one electron at a time, but this time they put a little detector next to one of the holes. So they could just see if the electron had gone through that hole or the other hole. They ran the experiment, they went away on holiday, they had a great time, and then they came back and this is what they saw. It's the cauliflower pattern. The very act of trying to watch the particles act like waves forces them to act like particles again. So this is the world that we live in. Everything's made from particles, but particles are actually waves. And so they behave completely differently to how you'd expect particles to behave. Unless you're looking at them, in which case they behave like particles again. Thanks for watching. Deliciously subscribe for more.